Hey everyone, I'm Matt McMahon here, uh, H2O Plasma Plug. I now have my own like page on Facebook if you wanted to join there and see uh, my progress on everything uh, and the inventions that I'm going to share, they'll all be linked to my like page. Um, I'm going to be giving out a lot of inventions now. Um, I have a book. Oh, let's get the right. Oh, that's the plants. I have a book of designs. Um, some of them are just rough sketches, but um, I have a ton of stuff. I have more books um, with designs in them, and uh, I just feel that I have too many designs, and I just need some help. Um, I need AutoCAD help, and uh, you're going to have to hold on a second. Hey everyone, uh, Matt McMahon here, uh, H2O Plasma Plug. I now have a like page. Um, uh, Matt McMahon Inventor. If you would like to uh, start following any of my videos, I'll post all my uh, new videos up there, and um, also follow my uh, follow my progress. So, um, what I'm going to be sharing with you today is um, a modifi modification for the use of the Bedini motor, um, and hopefully I can explain it enough. And I would uh, love to have some help with building it. I'll show you what I've done and um, show you the design first. And um, I, I, I only started building uh, the motor probably, actually it was last summer. I was uh, invited to go to um, a showing of uh, free energy videos. And uh, I was hoping, I actually stayed up for I think 24 to 36 hours I um, actually passed out on the floor right here while I was waiting for, um, while I was sitting there doing everything. And um, so I need some help. I couldn't get the circuit to work because I modified the, the coil and I've been told that's the problem. You can't modify the coil. But um, so I'll explain all that in a few, in a, in a few minutes. So um, here's my design. I call it uh, the Revolution Bike, but uh, I think it should be properly dubbed the Revolution Bedini Bike. Um, I believe that uh, all people should always have credit um, where credit is due, and um, his efficient circuit would make this possible. So, um, first of all, uh, this is a bike, uh, obviously, and it has two kits on it. One kit is here with six coils in the front and another kit is here with six coils again on the back now this could be done in uh, two ways um, you could have the, the the coils on the front which I don't suggest unless you have them on the back to balance the weight so if you have the coils on the front you can have the power pack in the back and the controlling circuit um, underneath the, the center bar or you can use both or you can use just the back. What I what I had envisioned was um, just being able to have a uh, sort of um, you have those carriers on the back of your bike and having that modified to hold the Bedini coils. And um, so the uh, there will be four batteries, um, one for resting, um, well that one for charging. You can probably see that. Um, can you see that? Okay, so one for charging, one for resting, one for negative, and one for, this is PRI, um, primary. Okay, maybe I've got this in a 36 volt, um, but I think I didn't. But um, So I say here, optional version. So I wanna show you the firing of it that I think sort of makes it unique. Here's the center. This is just past the Bedini coil, and this is just to approach the Bedini coil. And it happens on both sides at the same time. And you would want, um, let's back this up. You would want to um, have a plastic um, holder on either side of the, the rim, and it would be aluminum rim like uh, John Bedini states. And you would have, you would have to tack weld uh, threaded rods onto the inside of, I mean, on the outside of the bike frame, that would then be the the holding mount for the the magnets. Um, and you can see further up here, it sort of describes a little bit better um, of how it would sort of look. Let's 
So it, it's I know it's a rough drawing. Um, I can't help that. I'm uh, you know I really wish I had AutoCAD skills to properly show you. Um, the other option is to obviously do it where all of them line up at the same time. I think that it would be uh, you would be able to have more horsepower if it was not. So um, and the other idea is to actually have another Bedini motor built into the um, into your pedals um, to actually help uh, reduce uh, the resistance on when you're actually pedaling itself. Um, so with this kit it would have the same sort of concept so normally you're gonna have your positive there um, your negative there so um, this is your primary battery this is your secondary battery um, there's also a light that's normally uh, flickering and I and I believe that there's got to be a way to tap some energy off of that and then use conventional uh, charging to um, to allow for the batteries to be properly used and then after that's done um, because John says that after you use these batteries they don't work in the same conventional manner anymore so um, they're basically uh, his systems that is is used for um, a recharging um, sorry a, a way to make the battery better um, after it's been dead for a long time and uh, there's always uh, I believe hearing I was hearing about uh, rest so there'd be one for rest and if you were to always cycle these batteries with a, a switching system um, I believe that you could probably get this thing to run itself and if you wanted to actually just turn this off while you're biking say you're going downhill the system would turn off uh, if you wanted to do that, have some sort of a level sensor, and then um, it would actually be using these coils to actually charge up the batteries in a normal um, convention. And you could even use it as a brake um, to charge it up even more uh, because you're already creating force. So, um, But I think that doing this would make it much easier to get up a hill too if you're still having to pedal. But if you also have this on with a Bedini motor it would also be even less uh, less resistance that would have to be made and I haven't shown that design yet and uh, it's st still sort of um, uh, brainstorming in my head and I know once I've done one of these parts the front or the back um, I know uh, by looking at this and then looking at this I'll be able to get it done um, but so I'll show you what I've done I just gotta fix this So I built this, um, this circuit that was online, had no luck, would not get it to work. I know you don't see most of the parts there anymore because they're gone, but um, I'll, I'll show you that I have all the parts to do it. And here's the big monster coil, and the reason I decided to do this big coil was because I looked at John Bedini's um, big, uh, big motor, uh, and it, um, it had a full it was full around it and because it was full around it I decided that it should not be um, it was definitely not 700 turns so after looking at his while I was making this at my buddy's shop um, I, I figured that it would be closer to this it would be cl closer to the, the full amount but now that I'm thinking about it I'm assuming that John probably used thicker gauges to have less resistance and I think what I've done here is just created too much resistance and I need to have uh, some sort of um, uh, modified potentiometer or some other type of, um, of uh, device to, to make it work properly the um the Bedini coil will actually um, be made into three parts. Um, the the inner part with the uh, so the inner part that goes in here, and the outer part will be one piece, and then this top piece will be one piece, and then there will be a, a sleeve that will go over um, over the coil. So you would actually have this part. Um, it would go right to where the edge of the copper normally would go and then you would uh, slip the sleeve over top of it then you would put this on um, and the top of the this part would have uh, nylon uh, pieces attached to it or uh, plastic welded and it would go through the sleeve and then come out on the other side and be bolted tight so that way it's uh, water sealed um, for the bike 
And then I wanted to show you this. By doing that, you'll actually, um, yeah, let's zoom in on that a little bit there. This is the coil. It, it's, it'll sit on a, on a plastic rail that'll hold it on either side and uh, that plastic rail will be able to be turned in and out um, from it and it ha it'll ha it sit on two pivot points um, and this will allow you to be able to change the angle in which the core is pointing um, to a so that will happen like right here on either side um, because on the outside of this sorry on the outside of the coil on either side it'll also have another nylon rod sticking out of either side um, that way you'll be able to adjust it like this and you'll be and um, yes it'll need a, a multi one actually um, you'll be able to adjust it in and out like this and that same one will have another pivot point where you'll be able to adjust it like this so that way you can turn it in and out you can turn it back and forth um, that might also be able to easily be adjusted just by um, just by the the part that holds it. But I could use some engineering help on that if you wanted to uh, to help with that part. That would be awesome. So um, figured that was in, important to uh, to show how the coil worked. And um, this is actually uh, wrong up here. This is how it will sit. There'll be a, a magnet right, you know, here lined up with it and. Um, just to uh, be able to change the angle a little bit might uh, might improve for uh, different efficiency and um, we can even have it so on this part um, the uh, the thread that sticks out can actually be adjusted up and down um, as well to bring this in closer so that way everything is completely adjustable with it so figured I needed to add that part as well and if anybody feels like helping out with this project I would very much appreciate it um, I can send you all the parts that I have to get uh, at least one coil done so then I can replicate that but uh, I have everything here like I've got I bought every single type of transistor that I could find um, some uh, MJ E 3055 T um, I was confused about the tea. I hopefully uh, that didn't uh, I didn't buy garbage there. Oop, that's always good to drop those. Um, MJ one o five two four G. It's not focusing properly. Probably because it's stupid showing. Then uh, this is one that I I broke. Um, and then we have. I don't know if we'll be able to zoom in. Yeah, it doesn't like to zoom in that much, so I'll just read it off of it. Um, MJL21194. I have some um, 1K uh, resistors. Got an on off switch. Uh, here's some other transistors. Okay, this was from uh, the uh, the ones uh, H1061. I was using that for the um, uh, the laser saber replication. Um, I just need help building this stuff. Um, you know, I, I I don't understand everything about electronics yet, and I really do hope to learn as much as I can. But you know, it's a slow learning process. Some. Um, some diodes, one N four zero zero one. Some more, one N four zero zero seven. One hundred ohm resistors. I got a whole pack of these. Because I bought them on eBay, there was cheaper to buy like a hundred of them rather than not the neon bulbs. Everywhere else, they were charging too much. There's some more of them. Uh, too bad they don't have a, a listing on them or anything. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's it. Um, I think I already called those ones off. So. I have all this stuff to get it done, I just, like I said, I need some help, um, and, 
I've got a bike I want to use for it, but I don't know if it'll work um, because when I did ended up when I did end up checking the frame, it was uh, it did uh, have a magnetic uh, the ma ma a magnetic interference um, on like it, the magnet stuck. So um, here are the the ceramic ones. Um, I forget the dimensions of those, but I have a. Uh, I had some extra left over after wrapping them on this. And then I have the neodymium ones. I believe they're half inch, half inch by one inch. And they actually fit perfectly in this frame. But um, we don't want that frame. We actually want to be able to uh, spot weld th uh, pieces of threaded al aluminum onto the frame of this wheel. And uh, basically we have to have a template um, to do that. And then you just bolt the, uh, the attachment right onto it. So... Um, I've got additional coil bobbins. Um, I have everything to do this, so I just need some help. So if any of you would like to help out with this project, um, that would be amazing. Um, if you know anyone that's interested in Bedini stuff and has made some Bedini circuits and has done some uh, Bedini stuff, that would be awesome as well. Um, and I even have another project that I would love to um, to have done if I could also get some help, and that is this motor. Um, this is a a blower motor fan that you find in a car, and I would love to do um, the fan design with it because it has the same type of holes inside. So if I could do the fan design with this we could have very, very efficient uh, blower motors in our vehicles, and they could actually charge up batteries while they're being used. So, you know, that's a win-win situation. So, um, I've got lots of batteries for uh, for future use. I get them free, luckily. I have a, a good friend that uh, works at a place where they normally uh, get tossed out, and they're still sort of good. Um, so, yeah, if, uh, if you want to help, let me know. Um, like, subscribe, uh, join my like page. Um, hopefully I can start getting some of the stuff built with your help. Um, I have uh, my next video I'm actually going to do right away. And I'm going to show you an anti-gravity motor. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, it, it's a bearingless anti-gravity motor. So um, anyways, enjoy. And uh, any help? I could, I could really use some help. I'm still learning electronics and uh, got lots of projects coming up that uh, could really require it. I'm also uh, working on a project to run an engine on water uh, through a conventional method and then we will go to high voltage, high frequency electrolysis and we'll probably use something like this um, or even just a whole bunch of these toroids uh, wrapped in a special manner. Um, so, yeah. Matt McMahon, signing out. Like my page. Take it out. Take care. Peace. Bye.